with the writer's strike in full swing and the average American caring less about it than declassified files and videos on UFOs. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. Jimmy Kimmel, Fallon, Ferguson, the guy from Strangers with Candy, and John Oliver. We suspect she may be retarded. If I wasn't looking directly at this promotional photo, I couldn't tell you the names of anyone other than the two Jimmys, whom both equally suck. This is the greatest show on television because there is no host in late night that pretends to care the way you do. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I love that. Thank you. And I love Thank that you so much. Oh, no, no, no. Thank you. I mean, no one captures phoniness the way you do. It's a, it's a gift. On such a level, I call them a comedy black hole where nothing funny ever escapes. The funniest thing Jimmy Fallon has done in recent memory was being the victim of the hashtag rip Jimmy Fallon meme that used to happen on Twitter every one to three years. Running to Elon Musk and demanding that he do something about it before ultimately killing the meme himself by making it the cold opener on his late night show. Like I said before, comedy black hole. Something funny goes in, but nothing funny ever comes out. The promotional video I'll let you know about says Strike Force 5 dropped a few days ago. I can't remember the exact date because I got high as possible to forget that I ever watched this. Imagine Strike Force 5 is their equivalent of a Kurosawa film. If a Kurosawa fell down the stairs, bumped his head, and became legally retarded, and took an interest in being not funny for the rest of his life. Who was like, oh hey, let's give the most unfunny person ever a show. Which has a flat, flexible shell that allows it to hide in rock crevasses. One more time, Jimmy. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jimmy Fallon. Oh, I'm Stephen I Colbert. Thought, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. I thought when you said Jimmy, you meant me, Jimmy, but you meant Jimmy, Jimmy. I always mean you. But when you I say always Seth, mean Seth Meyers, who do you mean? I mean John Oliver. <laughs> it's sense. the five of us together for uh, maybe an hour a, a day. Strike Force 5 is the name of our podcast. Subscribe to it now. Spotify or wherever else you get your podcasts. But Spotify, you f <laughs> Kill me, please. I want to die. Well, that was hilarious. Five men who have never or haven't written jokes for themselves in the better part of a decade have decided to terrorize the rest of us with their scary great talent. This podcast only cements just how little the strike actually matters to the normal American suffering through this recession. I haven't felt this level of tone deaf since The Rock and Oprah Winfrey decided to ask broke Americans living through the recession to help Hawaii. So if you send a donation... You get the hell out! Nah, bitch. How about you and The Rock cough up a few million dollars and leave the rest of us alone? Strike Force is a grassroots movement supported by the mainstream media and sponsored by Mint Mobile. You know what's funny, Stu? Uh, the lead designer, she has Mint Mobile. Yeah, she says it fucking sucks like Ryan Reynolds acting. What? The microphone's still on. It's still hot. Stu, press the... Stu! And each host is worth a minimum of $10 million at the least. Nothing says grassroots like this. God give me strength. As soon as the podcast starts, you're treated with sponsor after sponsor. Uh, our presenting sponsors, Diageo, which is the company that makes Casamigos Tequila, our sponsor for this show. Many of your favorite uh, spirits. And Mint Mobile, thanks to our friend Ryan Reynolds, who also owns Aviation Gin. Thank you, Mint Mobile. Don't worry, the money goes to the writer's strike. Yay. But smug writers that create shows like She-Hulk and Velma that specialize in telling me that I'm a bigot. What the f*** that for? Strike Force is painstakingly boring. Kimmel hitting the thunder sound effect every time someone says Strike Force is mentioned is the epitome of the phrase beating a dead horse. We are the Strike Force 5. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Steven definitely came up with Strike Force 5. But that was before we were the Strike Force 5. Every other word in the first 10 minutes is telling us how great the sponsor Mint Mobile is, while working in the most unfunny non sequiturs I've ever heard in my life. Because that's a fantastic, you just like drink a ton of tequila and mm -hmm. then use your Mint Mobile device 
to text someone who used to text, love you. Text. You might say, oh, you're not that very funny yourself. Listen, bud, every time I say something remotely too humorous on YouTube, I get flagged to death. I literally got flagged for hate speech against a magpie bird on this platform. Don't do anything funny that could be misconstrued as bigoted, even if it's directed at an inanimate object or a bird. I'd kill for this level of creative freedom that they seem to have. How Lily Singh couldn't crush these dudes in the ratings blows my mind. And it only highlights just how unfunny she was outside of her little YouTube bubble. I've heard this show. I hate this on so many levels, not even about being sexist. I just hate it in general. By the time I got eight minutes in on Strike Force, Craig Ferguson said something to the effect of how without their hundreds of people working for them, and I quote, uh, researchers, producers, writers, all these people, uh, I think you're really going to feel their absence while you listen to the five of us talk without their help. Bro, even with your writers, the show could be best described as audible ambient. Tonight, I have been thinking, Stephen, that you are a really um, model white man. You're a, a really... Well, I, I am the picture in the dictionary next to a white man, Liz I think. You're... They don't get much whiter than me. <laughs> you are the good version of one because... Oh, oh my God, corny, <laughs> lame, boo, tomato, 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 I'm throwing tomato. Watching late night television is a good way to fall asleep and makes perfect sense why it's on late. To help insomniacs like me fall into a self-induced coma. Remember when Stephen Colbert had all those dance numbers for the vaccine? Boy, that was fun and funny, wasn't it? This is top tier comedy. What are you, Down syndrome? How could America not miss this? The steady decline of late night television is a symptomatic issue of safe comedy, and I quote, when everything is safe, nothing is thrilling or even fun. It's all one big hug fest from the aunt you can't stand at Christmas. It's not that she's a bad person. You just can't gel with this lady, and it'd be nice if she left you the hell alone. But it's Christmas and you don't have a choice. I tapped out at eight minutes and 41 seconds in, I swear to God, I've gotten more laughs out of Dark Side Fell begging for money and yelling at his chat than I did from the first 10 minutes of Strike Force. And that is just criminally insane. I think that someone who has to live day to day on tips and shit is funny. Oh, so Tell hilarious off, that this guy has stuff financially tight. Ha 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 ha. No, it's not <laughs> funny. Now shut up, assholes, man. <laughs> really? I mean, can you be any more much of, a, much of a dick to someone 